Hi there, my name is Vic Fee. I'm the head of the sleep surgery department at the Royal National ENT Hospital in Central London. And my job on the NHS is to help people with obstructive sleep apnea. Now, what I want to talk about in this video is about why we don't use the Epworth score anymore to work out whether or not we should do a sleep study. If you don't know what the Epworth score is, the Epworth score is a daytime tiredness questionnaire. So there's lots of questions about are you tired when you're at traffic or as a passenger in a car if you're would you fall asleep or would you doze off if you're lying in a bed in the afternoon all those sorts of questions and it works out how tired you are during the day and in the old days we used to think oh look these people with obstructive sleep apnea are waking up multiple times at night obviously they're going to be tired during the day we use this questionnaire to work out whether or not they have sleep apnea and if they seem a bit tired we'll do a sleep study and that's how we can pick out who has sleep apnea and who doesn't but there are some problems with that because Actually, lots of people are tired for lots of different reasons. Young mothers with small children are obviously tired. I've just finished a week on call. I'm very tired. So that doesn't mean that I've got obstructive sleep apnea. And equally, a lot of people with obstructive sleep apnea don't feel tired. There's lots of reasons for this. It might be that they just sleep more and therefore they don't feel tired during the day. Or maybe they just don't realise that they're so tired. Sometimes getting treatment and then realize, oh, I've, I didn't realize I was so tired for all those years. I've been living like this for sort of chronically tired for so long. I just, it was my normal uh, and I forgot what normal really was. The other major problem with the Epworth score for uh, trying to pick up if you've got sleep apnea or not, is it's not validated for that purpose at all. And what I did was to sort of prove this, is that I got a, a thousand of my patients and I matched up their Epworth score with their sleep studies. And what I'll do is I'll present the data here now so you can see it. So that you understand this graph, there are 997 people in this study and each of them are represented by a blue spot. Now at the bottom, you've got the Epworth score. As you go further along to the right of this graph, you become more and more tired. And on the left in the vertical axis going up, you've got the AHI or how bad your sleep apnea is. So further up the graph you go, the worse your sleep apnea is. So remember on the left, everything below five is completely normal, but you can see there's some very severe people going all the way up to 120. These people at the top range stop breathing every 30 seconds whilst they're asleep. The red line you can see going across is the line of best fit, and you can see it ever so slightly moves up on the right. If you look to the right of the graph, you can see that there are some people who are very tired but don't have any sleep apnea. And if you look at everything below 10, which is considered not sleepy on this scale, there are lots of people with apnea scores greater than 100. But let me show you this in different graphs. Now in this chart, what I've done is I've represented those numbers and tried to use Epworth score as a screening tool for obstructive sleep apnea. So in this chart, what I've done is I've used an Epworth score of 8. Anything over 8 means that you're very tired. And I've used an AHI of greater than 5. So that means anyone with any sort of sleep apnea. And you can see the sensitivity, which is a test to see how easily this test is able to pick up people with sleep apnea, is only at 61.5%. So what that means is that if you took 100 people with sleep apnea and you use the Epworth score to work out if they have sleep apnea or not, about 48% of them would be told that they do not have obstructive sleep apnea when they really do. I've put some other values in there in case you're interested in statistics, but sensitivity is the most important, I think, for a screening test. This is almost the same graph, but what I'm doing this time is using an Epworth score of 11 as the cutoff for a tiredness. And you can see that the sensitivity goes down now to 44.3%. So it's even worse now at picking up people with obstructive sleep apnea. The reason why I've made this graph is that because there are some sleep centers around the country that only treat people with an AHI of greater than 15, meaning that they have moderate to severe obstructive sleep apnea. So what I did was I've made this graph with an Epworth score of 11. So you can see that the Epworth score doesn't really help these people either. If you look at the sensitivity, it's almost at 50%, meaning that 50% of people aren't picked up with this screening tool. Personally, I think this is quite bad because it means that 50% of people who need CPAP, whose life expectancy has been reduced, aren't being picked up with the Epworth score. So you can see it's a terrible test. It doesn't work at all for this problem. And that's why none of us really use Epworth score again to try and pick out who has sleep apnea or not. And so it shouldn't be happening anymore. What we should do, uh, what most of us do now is something called a, a stop bang test. So if you look up stop bang questionnaire on the on Google, you'll find it or I'll leave a link in the description below. And what that is, is a series of about eight questions and you just go through them. Do you snore? Has anyone seen you stop breathing at night? And all those sorts of questions. Are you tired? 
Uh, once you've answered those eight questions, it'll spit out a score saying that you're low risk, uh, intermediate risk, or high risk for having obstructive sleep apnea. If you're intermediate or high risk, we say, look, go and get a sleep study. Just make sure you don't have this problem. And then we can work out what else could be going on with you. The stop bang test has been validated. It works for obstructive sleep apnea. It's a good screening tool. We use that now. We don't use anything else. Now, the reason why I made this video is because not long ago, I found someone who had very severe obstructive sleep apnea after a sleep study. I said, look, you've just told me you've had these symptoms for years. Why didn't you sort of see us before? He said, well, I've never been really tired. I knew there was a problem because my wife was telling me that I was waking up and I looked like I couldn't breathe all night. But every time I went to the GP, there was this rule in the area that said, oh, if your EPO score is low and his was less than eight, I think his was four or five, then you clearly don't have obstructive sleep, you don't need to sleep, so you don't need to be referred on for that. But that's very, very old news now. So use a stop bang. That will tell you if you've got a sort of a low, medium or a high chance of having obstructive sleep apnea. We don't use the EPO score for this anymore. On saying that, the EPO score isn't completely useless. We do use it quite a lot in sleep medicine. And what I'll do is I'll leave that for another video because it's a little bit complicated. And uh, I've also just remembered that I made my own questionnaire for uh, people with obstructive sleep apnea. I'll talk about that in another video as well. And I'll try and link it if it, I'll do it afterwards. I'll link it there later. But that questionnaire was mainly due to my frustration with some of these questionnaires for sleep at the time. And hopefully you might find that useful as well. Anyway, for this video, take care. Bye-bye.